My name's Matt Crump. I've been known as a lot of things over my life. The class clown, the army guy, the rocker guy, the car guy, and the guitar guy. I've also made a lot of mistakes in my life, but the best thing I ever did, that's give my heart and life to Jesus Christ. He led me down a lifelong path and introduced me to my awesome bride, Rockin' Robin, blessed us with two incredible kids, and has given me a hope through some of the absolute toughest times of my life. See, I'm battling stage four cancer, and although that sucks, <laughs> it's opened my eyes and heart to a hope I never knew this way before and moments I never noticed. I call those God's Got This Moments, and they reveal hope like never before. Today, I'd like to welcome you to this week's God's Got This Stories. Hey everyone, this is Matt Crump, obviously, from hashtag God's Got This. And on today's God's Got This Stories, I wanted to share a moment with you uh, in reference to God's Got This Stories. Uh, there are several stories here on our YouTube channel that uh, are specifically about people and that will continue on uh, as long as I'm able to continue that. Uh, we've got several interviews uh, getting worked on now and those that will be coming up shortly. Uh, but today, uh, I had to deal with another call from another family letting me know that uh, another friend has passed away. That, um, that kind of led me to today's time with you. Uh, as a person who, uh, who has the title as a purveyor of hope, uh, it means that I'm a person that tries to provide hope to others. Uh, I can't do that by myself. I'm not that good. <laughs> Truth is, I need Jesus and He's my hope. And all I can do is try to relay things that He shares with me. And I try to share that with families. And I'm obviously going through my own battles and have to deal with, with things in my own life. And as I minister with many other families, uh, there are so many other people that are in, in worse condition that I am, uh, people will look at me immediately and think, wow, you don't even look like you're that bad. And although sometimes that really gets on my nerves, uh, the truth is I'm very grateful that God has allowed me to be this strong uh, because I need to be. Uh, if, if you knew what was on the inside, uh, you would probably feel differently uh, about about the statements. Um, I bring that up because I'm a person who tries to bring life and hope into other people's lives in the midst of my own struggle of trying to have hope and life in my own. Uh, I have down days and there are times when things like phone calls from friends dying that it affects me. Um, I don't think it affects me to the point where I want to give up or to a place where I, uh, I don't have hope, that's not the case at all. But it does, uh, it, it is a downer, uh, straight up just a downer. And I have a hard time sometimes with it. And um, it's, it's really hard for all of us to have to understand how we can say God's got this. 
So I was reminded today by one of my spiritual fathers, Pastor Al, that um, Jude one twenty says to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and wait on the mercy of Jesus Christ that gives you life. That's the, uh, the NMV, the New Matt version. I paraphrased it a bit, but um, it basically says that uh, we need to, to ask God for the mercy that we need, uh, for the grace that we need, uh, for the power that we need to get through situations. There's no doubt we're going to face hard times. And sometimes you're going to be needed to provide help for other people. And it's then when you need to dig in deep and sometimes when you're like, I don't know if I even have it, is, uh, is when you really need to acknowledge you don't. That's one of those God's got this moments, realizing that He does, and ask Him for it. And, uh, and then wait for His mercy to shine on life. Uh, he's the author of life. And in the midst of pain, uh, death, confusion, anger, bitterness, frustrations, uh, uh, situations where, uh, where everybody faces all kinds of emotions and, and even you know, financial problems during times like this. Um, I, I don't know any other way but to trust in Him. I don't know any other way to get through it but to trust in Him. If it weren't for Him, I'd, I'd be dead already. That's part of my God's got this story. It's really part of yours, too. So one of my all-time favorite scriptures, I got many, but one of them that the Lord always speaks to my heart, and, uh, you know, if, if you... If you know the Lord, you know what I'm about to say, but every time He speaks it to me, it, it usually speaks something different. You know, it's funny how some people say, well, I don't know how the, you know, you could say the Bible says this and says that. Well, it's a living word. And somehow, some way, it speaks to us. And um, it does that to me all the time. So I'm very thankful that His Word's alive. And um, I could look at a scripture, and sometimes it means something different to me. It may be just for me. It may not be a, a uh, theologically, doctrinally sound interpretation of the scripture, uh, but there are times that the Lord will speak things to us through, through the Word, uh, and through, who knows, songs, people, dogs, cats, whatever, right? So, anyway, Psalm 37, uh, verses 3 and 4 are, are really powerful to me says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desire. It's powerful. Trust in the Lord and do good. Okay? Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. So the first place we go is to trust. And as we trust, we just keep doing good, right? Don't give up. Don't do bad. Don't go negative. Stay positive and do. Bless others. Um, then you'll live safely in the land and prosper. What land? Oh, the land God's given to you. Where do you live? Where's your places of, of uh, reach? Where uh, your work, your school, your home, uh, wherever. Your place, your world, where you live, right? You'll live safely in the land and prosper. That doesn't just mean dollars. It could mean to, to somebody like me, it could mean perfect health. Um, for me to have perfect health over a million dollars right now, well, kind of tempting, <laughs> but <laughs> reality, no, nah, perfect health every time. Uh, I have the ability through perfect health to acquire wealth. And, uh, Prosperity is so much more than money. Um, to be a person that can provide hope to somebody else, I'm not the only purveyor, you are too. We're all equipped with the ability to do that. And a lot of times in our lowest moments is, is when 
that can speak the highest volume to others. It can be a powerful moment to other people, especially when they know what you're going through. And verse 4 says, Take delight in the Lord. I wrote a song uh, not too long ago, a few months back, that says, I delight in you. It came from the scripture. Take delight in the Lord. It means delight in Him. What's to delight mean? Um, you know, when you just are elated with something, excited about something, where uh, you can't get certain things off of your mind, right? For those that aren't married, when you first meet the guy, the, the gal, that excitement all over it that uh, you have that you just want to be with this person. For those that are married, it's the excitement of that guy or gal that you have that you just can't get over, right? It never ends, right, guys, right, gals? Um, and if it does, you need to work on it. Um, take delight in the Lord. I delight in you, God. I delight in everything about you. I, I want to speak good things about you. I want to live in you. I want to trust in you. It's that uh, Jude scripture I gave you just a moment ago that I will pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and I'll wait for his mercy. I'll wait for it for, for life because he's a life giver, right? He's got a life. Take delight in him. And then it says, he will give you your heart's desires. Mm. He loves to bless us. So what does that mean, Matt? When we just lose somebody, how is that my heart's desire? It's not. Um, I believe our heart's desire for loved ones, if we know Jesus, is for that loved one to be with Christ. It's a big desire. To know that person is with Jesus, to know the kind of life they've lived, uh, to know how they've sold out to Christ. That's an assurance. It makes you feel comfortable to know that person's with Christ. And there are some times where we're not sure, just because somebody believes, like in the car in the garage, because this car uh, can sit in the garage all night long. It's still a car. I sit in this garage all night long. I'm not a car. <laughs> I'm still me. So I can sit in here all day long and say I'm a car. I'm not. Um, so just saying something alone isn't enough. It, it really comes from here. And uh, the Bible tells us that, that uh, yeah, there's a way to inspect that. People say, well, you don't know my heart. Yeah, yeah, we can. The Bible says that out of our heart, the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. The things we say, how we say it, how we live it, how we do it, and it shows if Jesus is really Lord or not. Um, so take delight, right? We delight in Him regardless, and we're going to do good. And as we do that, we'll live safely in the land and prosper because God's going to take care of us. If you're having a down time, uh, you're, you're losing hope, you're losing family, losing loved ones. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. And then he will, he will, you'll live safely in the land and prosper. He's going to take care of you. Take delight in the Lord. Yeah, it's okay to mourn. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to be angry. We can even be mad at God. He's big enough to handle that. Be honest enough to be angry with Him and not fake it. Right? Don't be like, oh, yeah, whatever, whatever the Lord wants. Meanwhile, inside you're going, stupid God, I hate it. It's guts right now. Scary, right? But that's really how we feel sometimes. Then you might as well just be big enough to say, you know what, God? I'm mad at you right now. I'm, I'm angry with you. I, I feel like I hate you because you took someone I love. Or you've, you've put something on me that, that I don't think I should have. Did he really? Nah. It says, trust in the Lord. Do good. He'll give you safety. He'll give you way. Delight in him. He'll give you your heart's desire. My desire is to know him, to live with him, to know him. And that whatever he wants from me, I want. My heart's desire, right? So I remember when I was, uh, before I was a believer in Christ, I mean a real one, where I gave my life to him. And I had problems with drugs and alcohol and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and um, uh, one of the vices that I had was smoking cigarettes. Drugs and alcohol, uh, well, it all went at the same time. Cigarettes was the biggest one on me because it was so easy to get because it wasn't illegal, right? Um, so I, I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. And I had tried quitting a lot of times. I smoked for a long time, um, years. And I, I could not quit. I tried many times to quit, couldn't do it. Uh, I didn't have it in me. 
till I realized I didn't have it in me and I needed Him. This scripture jumped out and I needed to trust in Him. And I said, God, if, if I do all these things, I delight in you and, and you're going to give me my heart's desire. Well, what God did was because I have, a, I have an addictive personality, um, He took the addictions that I had for drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and He, he removed them. But because I have an addictive personality, there's a, a void here. That addictive guy is going to have something. So it's either going to be cigarettes and drugs and alcohol again or something else. And the or something else was he placed in me because I really wanted to serve him. I, I wanted to, to be all in with him. He gave me a hunger for his word. Um, I read the Bible all the time. I was highlighting, memorizing, quoting, uh, eating it up, right? And I then realized I had no desire for anything else. It was just for him, his word, his people, and I was instantly delivered from drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, um, a life without him and all the junk that goes along with it in, in a, a young man's life. So, um, yeah, it's very possible to trust in him, delight him, and give us our heart's desires. And sometimes we can't even put in words what our heart's desires are. It's the cool thing about God since He made us, He knit us together in our own mother's wombs that He knows our hearts better than we do. So when we ask for our heart's desire, He knows what that is. So when you ask God to, to take away something because you want this scripture to be fulfilled in your life, you just trust Him with it. Don't even have your list of that my heart's desire is I want this car, this house, this person, this money, this... Nah, Lord, I, I want to... I want to get rid of these things in my life that I know are not from you. And I'm asking for my heart's desire. Right? So how does all this come together and that God's got this story and for hope? I believe that, that many of us that are struggling with loss, uh, with mourning, with grieving, uh, and as much as I am dealing with uh, death, and so many near-death experiences in my friends' lives and people that I'm being introduced to now that I have to, uh, not have to, I get to uh, be with and minister to and share the Word of God and hope with, uh, is, is powerful. It's an excitement to me. I, I love to, to share that hope with them. And then the flip side of that is that um, I have to be with a lot of folks that are dying and near death, and, and it can be heavy. It's like... It's like being, a, I couldn't be a nurse in a children's cancer center. It takes a certain person to do something like that. Uh, unless you've been around those places, you, you just, it's heavy. If you don't know, don't go. But if, you, if you've ever been around it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I just wanted to, to have a moment with us today for this God's Got This story about, about your story, about the people around you, about things that we go through and have to endure in life. And... As you look through God's Got This Stories here on our, on our YouTube channel, I want you to be encouraged by what the people say, how they're experiencing life, how they're trusting in the Lord. That's what they're all there for, for you to, to gain uh, a clarity and hope into the insight of people that are experiencing things that you aren't and hopefully never have to. Um, but disease and cancer and all kinds of junk, they, they affect all of us. Um, I'm not the only one with cancer in my house. My wife and kids have to deal with it too. Um, they're afflicted with it. They have to live life uh, through what I'm having to deal with on good days, bad days, wondering what's going to happen, all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's the way it, it rolls for all of us. Uh, so be encouraged today. I want to encourage you to trust in the Lord and do good. And, and he, will, he will provide for you. He'll give you safety in the land. Delight yourself in Him. And I promise you, if you do those things, He will give you the desires of your heart. And when you're going through a horrible time and you've lost something or someone dear to you uh, that you could say, this does not fit the mold here, God, because how could this possibly be? Yeah, I get it. And sometimes it does not make sense. We live in a, a fallen world. If you'll just watch the news for 15 minutes, you'll see how much garbage is going on around us. Um, and folks, it's not getting better. It's getting worse every day, horribly worse. Things on the news that just blow your mind that 10, 15 years ago, heck, five years ago, you never would have expected would have been 
said in the news. Yeah, it's getting worse. So, so how do we live through those moments? Because bad things are going to happen to good people, and I surely hope it doesn't happen to you. But, but no one on this planet, no one, is free from, from things bad happening to us. Uh, but we are blessed to have good things that can happen to us. We are blessed to have hope and life and a way to get through those things when those bad things happen. It's never been God's plan for us. But He wasn't the one that made the mistake. He wasn't the one that screwed up. We did. And, and honestly, folks, can you say that you're perfect? Can you say that you've never made a mistake in your life? Whether you believe in Jesus or not, really and if you have made a mistake in your life if you have sinned missed the mark done some bad things lied cheated lusted stolen whether it be from heart or possessions um, so many different things desired to hurt someone wish somebody to be dead murder in your heart yeah there's a list of of things out there that that shows where we have some flaws we're all flawed but the good news is that's why Jesus came to give us life mercy as in first in Jude first chapter verse 20 I shared with you earlier press in don't give up let's pray for each other I need it you need it others are gonna need it there may be a moment in your life you're gonna need something more than you ever thought so be ready. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Delight in Him. And He will give you the desires of your heart. You know why? Because you don't have this, and I don't have this. We can only have it because He gives it to us. Because yes, God's got this. This world is lost and